Hello everyone, just realised my headphones weren't plugged in so you might be getting a little bit of feedback. Smooth start. Hello, um, I can see my mic's coming through now, so that's good. Um, thank you for joining us tonight for Assembly Online and then Happy New, Happy New Year as uh, this is the first one of 2022. If you haven't tuned in before, um, I'm Henry, I work for the Assembly House Trust. I won't be visible for most of tonight's show, but I'll be here in the wings and I'll be back towards the end. Um, I'm going to pass straight over to Phoebe from um, Hospital Rooms, who will be um, hosting tonight's conversation. Um, oh, just before I do, I should say hello from uh, the people who said hello in the chat, which is uh, Tessa Newcomb. Hello, uh, Donna Thompson, hello from Norwich. Martin Batty saying hello, and Philippa. Um, Francis Martin, hello from Norwich too. Uh, Claire, and uh, Maisie Forrest, hello, tuning in from Norwich too. Um, so thank you, yeah, do, uh, if you have questions whilst the event is in process, do post them to the uh, chat and I'll make sure they're forwarded to the participants. Um, but yeah, see you at the end for a bit more chat maybe, or to join in with the questions. Um, hope you enjoy it. Great. Um, hello, everyone. Hello, everyone that said hello, and hello to everyone that hasn't. Um, we're um, really, really happy to be here. Thank you so much, Assembly Online and Assembly House Trust for hosting this event. Um, and this coincides with our exhibition that's on at the moment at East Gallery NUA, um, but ends on Saturday. So this is a last minute plug. Do get over there if you're in Norwich. Um, it's worth it's worth the um, little or long walk wherever you come from. Um, I'm going to try and share my screen, hopefully with success. Um, can I get a nod from Carl and um, uh, you can see it all okay and it's in full screen? Amazing. Um, so just to start with, I'm going to do a little intro um, to hospital rooms um, and also the project that we're working on. Um, so Host Rooms is a charity, it's an arts and mental health charity that was founded in 2016 um, by Tim Shaw and Neve White, um, and they are the co-founders. Um, I joined three years ago, and it was the kind of three of us, and now we're a team of, um, I think, 14. Um, so it's... Yes. Very, ooh. Hello? Hello? I can hear um, myself, but <laughs> can anyone else hear that? Oh, um, um, okay, I'll continue. Sorry, I just heard very, my voice coming back very, at me. <laughs> very briefly, but it stopped now. It yes, stopped now, okay. Yes. Great. Um, so yeah, I was just saying we've um, grown sort of exponentially and this is our 15th project, Northside House. Um, so Tim and Eve set it up when they had a friend who was sectioned under the Mental Health Act and they went to visit her in a mental health unit and found it to be not only really bleak and clinical, but also kind of dilapidated um, and um, just really uninspiring. Um, and that isn't just a one-off case. We've found that really in um, kind of every mental health unit that we've gone to at the start of a project. Um, so it's something that really needs to be addressed. Um, and we really believe that bringing world-class artists into these spaces to work with service users and then create these permanent installations for the ward environments um, can not only help make the space look nice, but also really helps in terms of um, recovery and uh, feelings of self-worth and things like that. Um, so we've worked in a variety of different settings, um, rehab rehabilitation, psychiatric intensive care unit, children and adolescents, um, all of anything, anywhere you can think of really. Um, and this um, project, as I said, is our 15th and it's a Northside house. Um, so Northside House is a forensic unit, um, it's a medium secure forensic unit and what that means is that people who are um, residents at Northside House are likely to have come into contact with the criminal justice system and therefore their stay is quite long, um, it could be uh, anything up to multiple years um, and certainly months, so it's really um, uh, somewhere that people will call home for a while. Um, and 
through um, many sort of false starts with lockdowns and pandemic things. Um, this project was meant to start in early 2020 and stop um, at the end of 2020, but we've um, just finished it uh, for the end of 2021. So it's been a bit longer than, um, than planned, but we've also managed to create the most amazing um, friendships and relationships with staff members and service users. So that's what we're going to kind of go through today. Um, and I also want to mention that this project is in partnership with Norwich University of the Arts. So it's the first project where we've really put research at the center of what we're doing. Um, and this kind of in-depth and rigorous research into the impact of our projects um, and really trying to understand um, what the impact is on mental health ward communities. Um, so we kind of build a longer relationship and really start to understand what we're doing with acute awareness so we can um, get better and better and better at what we do. Um, so moving on quickly, um, you probably hear it, heard enough of me already, but um, I'm Phoebe since I am head of research at Hospital Rooms and I was actually leading this project um, from the beginning. So I've been really heavily involved um, and I'm also very interested in research. So this project was a really good one um, to, to kind of really grow um, in partnership with NUA. Um, so it's been really, really good from that point of view. And we've had six amazing artists, two of whom are here um, tonight and can kind of tell you a bit more from their perspective. Um, so if I could ask Carl, if you could introduce yourself. Yeah, um, thank you, Phoebe. Uh, my name's Carl Rowe. Um, I'm an artist. Uh, I studied um, at Manchester Polytechnic in the mid-1980s. Um, I'm currently a, a, an outpost studio holder in Norwich uh, and um, work from, from, that, uh, from that studio space. Um, uh, I'm also an academic. Um, for an, a good number of years, I ran the fine art course at Norwich University of the Arts. Um, I, um, I retired from that job. Uh, at the end of the summer, um, but I'm actually back at NUA uh, now as, uh, as a part-time um, senior research fellow, and I'll be working on um, workshops within um, healthcare environments and also care homes, um, and we've got an interesting project at HMP Norwich as well, um, so uh, quite a lot of uh, interesting work there, and I've worked on two commissions for hospital rooms, um, Woodlands Tribunal Room in 2018 and the Northside um, house project. And would you say that your kind of um, uh, those kind of host rooms projects have sort of sparked something um, in terms of working in this kind of participatory way, especially in health? Yeah, definitely. I, I think, uh, you know, it's, it, working as an artist sometimes can be it can be a bit lonely. It can be a bit solipsistic. Uh, you can wonder where you're going. Uh, and there's there's probably nothing quite like collaboration to shake you out of that. And I think also artists are always searching for the purpose of uh, an, an, an application in their work. So, you know, I think when you can see the benefits of working collaboratively with an organization and, and um, bringing sort of fortitude and hope to people uh, in, you know, situations like Northside House, then um, uh, that's that's a great bit of feedback to the artists as well. So yeah, definitely the, the uh, the last five years um, have been quite transfor transformational. Amazing. I, if anyone that can read the tiny little bit of text there, it says that I've got an idea in my head and I hopefully I'm going to be able to, to, to divulge that idea <laughs> later on when I'm talking about the project. I picked the right screenshot there. <laughs> you did. You did. <laughs> from the video. Um, oh, thank you, Carl. That's um, really lovely to hear. Um, Cara, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi everyone, uh, my name is Cara Nahal. I am a painter and I am based in London. Uh, that image that is in the slideshow is actually of my studio uh, when Hospital Rooms came and filmed a short uh, video workshop that we, we made for YouTube. And uh, yeah, it's funny looking at that because it's one of the things, um, was actually the same, a similar workshop that I ended up doing for Northside uh, House in the end as well. Um, I was really excited when Hospital Rooms got in touch uh, for this 
opportunity because I felt very strongly aligned to what they do and um, how they bring art to mental health units and also just to a wider audience in general. And uh, when they approached me for this project, um, I saw it also as an opportunity to broaden my art practice as well. I think what Carl said about being an artist can be quite uh, solitary is yeah really pertinent to this, especially as a painter. Um, so I thought this would be a great way to transform not only my work, but also my way of thinking and yeah, use it a chance to learn to work with other people. Amazing. Well, thank you both. And um, we're just going to kind of go through a bit of a kind of brief overview of the project um, and all the artists on the project. And then we're kind of do a little bit of a focus in on Cara and Carl's practice and um, both outside of the Hostreams project and then how it led um, to the work that they made for the ward. Um, so I wanted to, ooh, if I can move the screen. Um, so the artists that we're working with, and we're gonna go into this particular artwork um, in a lot of detail later on. So this is Carl Rose, and then we've got Carl in the halls here, um, both of which you've just heard from. Um, Dexter Dorwood was also on the project and I think what's really lovely about being able to do so much research is that we hear so many stories because and especially kind of um, our, we, we, we have a lot of informal conversations after the installations go up and during and things like that and we get a lot of real insight into um, how it is changing the ward, um, especially when there has been, you know, nothing there before. Um, so um, some really nice insights came um, about Dexter's in particular, and, I, and I'll do a little sort of case study on that um, in how this space, which is in between two different wards, um, totally transformed the really negative connotations that come um, for service users when thinking about corners, because I think corners in spaces um, especially for people that have had, um, you know, uh, have been victims of violence or have been um, caught up in something like that, I think can be quite um, scary um, because you never know what's on the other side. And this kind of piece, um, when we had a feedback session with staff, they said that service users now think that it's totally broken up the space, that they're no longer scared of this particular um, bit of the war, of the, um, of the unit so things like that also things that you never expect to happen because you don't think about corners in that way it's really nice um, to hear about someone else's experience like that um, similarly this is Naomi Harwins that was in the um, tv room at Catton Ward um, and again people it's it's I can't really see it from this picture but the artworks go all the way up the ceiling um, with these kind of relief panels and etchings and it kind of turns the whole room and it's quite a small room but into a kind of bubble and people have said that they feel very sort of um uh, safe and and held in this room um and one of the staff members said that that what she's managed to do especially with taking the emphasis away from the tv screen which is very institutionalized is that the artwork has um sort of created an, an antithesis to the institutional world so really thinking about what art can do in these spaces and what it can take attention away from and what it can bring attention towards. Um, and again, a lot of people um, come to this room to play video games and things. So they're kind of already in this like bubble in the video game and surrounded by this um, immersive installation. Um, the next one we have is um, Jade Montserrat. Um, and this is a triptych that runs across um, the main corridor in Northside House. So it's the corridor that everyone goes up and down um, when they're going to lunch or when they're going on leave. Um, and they're really nice messages, but they also make you think. Um, so we had one patient who um, saw the works going up and was really frustrated for a, for a week. Um, and then when we saw him again, he was like, I finally understand what it's about now. Um, and he was focused on the transcending the borders of movement, but he finally understood that it, for him, it was about finding a pinnacle, finding your own kind of um, nirvana or enlightenment, he said. So it's it's actually really nice to have these um, these kind of complex um, sayings or things that, that 
are engaging and people want to kind of work out. Um, and then the last one, the last artist is Richard Wentworth. Um, and he was the only person to work on Blakeney Ward, um, which is the lower secure ward that's kind of next to Catton, Catton Ward. Um, and Catton Ward is a medium secure. Um, so Richard took, um, I can zoom in, I think. Yeah, so Richard took a lot of inspiration from this outside space that, that Northside House have. That is, they, they call it the Mount, and it's where you can go if you have leave, you can go and um, look after chickens, um, look after little, they've got little canaries and birds, um, do gardening, grow vegetables, grow fruit. Um, and Richard, we went on a kind of sunny early summer day in June, um, and he saw the light coming through the netting of this koi carp pond and the kind of different types of shadows it was making, um, uh, sort of globular um, circles and then these slits. And then um, this kind of became his artwork for the ward. So it runs along at different points. Um, so it's kind of interesting also to see where people have taken inspiration from. Um, and I kind of think that I've actually never seen all the artworks together on sort of one page before. Um, and they, I don't know, it's very striking to me how vibrant and colorful they are and how many different textures um, are in that kind of um, space in this one unit. Um, I wanted to pause here just to ask if anyone has any sort of comments or questions or if um, Carl or Cara wanted to come in um, to talk about the six artworks um, together. I mean, I, I, I might just kind of jump in and say that just see, seeing the six images here, uh, I, I think the, this work represents a kind of a, a, a really tricky mix because it's both decorative, but it also has function it doesn't just disappear it's not anodyne um but you know but if it was if it wasn't decorative then uh then it, it wouldn't work it wouldn't pass the first hurdle so it's actually just seeing the six images here all together uh um that it, that's the the one thing that's jumped out at me yeah definitely i was thinking about how each piece responds to its place uh, really successfully. Um, I think one of the challenges I thought initially when we were talking about this was how to make a work for the space, but also how to make something that still feels like your work and not something that just, um, you know, sort of, a, I don't know how to, you know, like a cookie cutout thing or like a, you know, or just doing what you usually do and putting it on a wall, you know, how to actually respond to the space that felt like you were actually making a piece for it that felt that still felt like it was part of your practice yeah this is it's interesting thinking about that you know most artists make work for a gallery setting that has all you know all the kind of um blank walls that um a unit might have but obviously the the audience is very different and um you are also making work um i guess for someone's sort of living space um, so it is, yeah, it, and that's kind of why we do the um, the kind of co-productive process as well. But that's what I find so interesting is that it's um, it's so contextualized, but every artist brings such a different um, vibe and gets their inf in inspiration from such different sources within the kind of hospital feelings in a sense. Um, and yeah, if anyone has any sort of questions or comments as I as I go along, I'm very happy for people to interrupt me. Um, so if you do, just I think there's a little box on the uh, chat box on the on the YouTube. Um, so yeah, do get into it. Do write anything that you want to sort of um, hear from uh, or any questions you have. I was just also going to say, Phoebe, because that is something that we mentioned, I think, just before we went on air, that, that Northside House, the architecture is, is, is not grotesque and hideous and dull and nasty. It's actually quite a nicely designed and, and, and nicely made building. Um, uh, so um, I think that that's had some sort of um, influence on the artworks as well. I think they're all quite optimistic artworks because 
they play nicely with these spaces rather than trying to ameliorate some of the dullness or the or the 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 violence of an institutionalized space. Um, and I know some of the other projects that hospital rooms has done, they've you know, taken on really quite quite. Uh, difficult sites and locations um, with, with a, the, the initial attempt of actually just trying to deinstitutionalize them and make them feel more comfortable to be in. But I think that's something we've all talked about. Northside House is actually quite nice architecture to begin with. Yeah. And a lot of light, which is really helpful for artworks to kind of breathe. Um, yeah. And I especially think because three of the artworks, the top three, actually, the top three row are all at, in Catton Ward. And actually, there was nothing there before. So even though the architecture was quite nice, it wasn't as engaging as it is now. And um, I'll, I'll probably talk about this a bit later, but there's been a total, total kind of culture shift on the ward. Um, and it's really been spurred by um, the artworks and conversations that have happened as a result of them. Um, I can just see a few messages in the chat. Um, so Claire says... How do you choose the artists and who picks the space on the ward to be used? Um, so far, we've, we've managed to um, uh, let the artists pick the pick their, the spaces with um, not much um, sort of uh, competition or struggle or anything. It's been a very um, sort of nice uh, process. Um, and I think, um, so for example, Cara, that room, I think we'd had conversations um, and it really suited your work, especially because I think you can kind of see um, out of the, the window in between the blue arch, there's this kind of forest. Um, so the blue arch is kind of accentuating this um, little green wooded area. And because it's the quiet room, it's quite contemplative. But obviously I think the spaces and units um, each has a purpose that's very different and each artwork needs to be really sensitive to that purpose. So there's a lot of conversations that happen before the workshop, after the workshop, to make sure that the artwork that's going in um, each space is really, really um, suited and um, that the kind of artist knows exactly what that room will be used for. Um, and how do we choose artists? Um, well, I get. I think before it was it was um, very much that we would work with um, people that were in kind of our um, our frame of reference um, that we knew through contacts and um, uh, that we got in touch with. And we've worked um, like Carl's worked with us twice. We've worked with a lot of um, Turner Prize winners and nominees um, and kind of created this group through them. But we're really trying to, um, to challenge ourselves um, with who we work with and to be really, really ambitious. Um, so we're doing a, a project in London at Springfield Hospital, a total remake of a whole hospital. Um, and we've got a group of artists that we've never ever worked with before. Um, so I think as the organization grows, the kind of um, people know about us, people kind of come to us, whereas before we were going to them. So I think it's kind of shifted in that sense. Um, and Maisie says, how long was the process of transforming Northside House from planning to the workshop to the final artwork? Did doing this in the pandemic make it longer than usual? Uh, yes, it certainly did. <laughs> um, our projects are normally six months. Um, so we try and, because we, we're, it's contingent on Arts Council funding and things like that, um, we try and do all of the prep, all of the workshops, the proposals, the installations and um, the kind of final evaluation um, and exhibition and celebration all in six months. But obviously this one took two years, <laughs> so it was it was very delayed. Um, I'll just answer these next questions and then um, there's yeah, there's a few more things that I think will come out when I um, start speaking about the process more. And I also want to I want to let um, Carl and Cara talk about their practice. Um, so um, did you work with the residents with the designs? Yes. Um, and actually, I will um, go on to the next page because I kind of wanted to use Dexter Dorwood's process as an example. Um, so Dexter uh, did a workshop with um, 
with service users at Northside using these templates and they're templates from old Hispanic stone walls. And he's just done a residency in Mexico. So he's been very interested in the way that these kind of different shapes are put together and the structure holds without any kind of cement or um, fixative. So you just kind of build these things based on which shape suits um, going next to which other shape. Um, so he had this kind of design and he let service users interpret it in whatever they in whatever way they wanted. So some people used it as a kind of background for um, a kind of whole composition. Some people just really went into the details of the the different shapes and stones. Um, and it, it isn't here, but there was um, one service user that was very interested in this these pair of boxing gloves. Um, so each of the kind of elements, um, and I think I can zoom in and show you this one here. Um, so Dexter kind of, um, after speaking with people and looking at the um, the works that were made in the workshop, ooh, I go back too much. Um, then came up with this, which is his sort of final work. Um, and you can see that kind of little, um, I don't know if it's a tissue or someone trying to take something, um, that kind of motif here, and then the boxing gloves are there. And this kind of um, uh, um, different uh, kind of sunset um, image. And he kind of took different parts of it and kind of took what he thought was more poignant um, and made it into this composition. And I think you can see from the from this, which is, you know, how, as Carl said, it's not like badly designed or badly built, but it's just very, very bland. Like there's a whole wall here with nothing on it. Um, and again, people said that um, these kind of corner sections um, sort of make them feel quite scared. Um, so afterwards, when we had the feedback sessions for this, they said that it completely transformed the space and no longer were they kind of scared about corners because the sun made you almost be able to see through the walls. It was almost like a window. Um, so the corners of hope, um, they're now corners of hope and thoughtfulness rather than fear. So that was a really nice way that um, the workshop informed the final piece and then the final piece kind of had an effect on um, the way that service users experience the space. And all of these little kind of stories, as I said, that have come out of the research, um, we were able to publish a book which has all of the installation photographs, all of the workshop photo photographs in this really beautifully designed way. The cover is actually the etchings um, that I showed you previously from Naomi in the TV room. So these are all her kind of little drawings and motifs that, um, that she etched into um, her wooden relief. And these are also from the paper sculpture workshop that she did um, with service users. So everything has a link back to, to the kind of co-productive process. And I think that's where we really, um, what we really emphasize through host rooms is making sure that, um, that this isn't a solitary process of an artist coming in and changing a space. It's a real, it's a real, a real conversation um, and it's a conversation the whole way through. Um, so for example, this is um, Richard Wentworth's kind of um, section of the book. And this is the workshop he led, which was about materiality and clay. Um, and we got some really beautiful pictures um, there. Um, and then this is another uh, little quote that came from the, the research. It came from a service user um, who I think I spoke about before, but um, I really love this quote because he kind of, uh, it's this exclamation of, now I get it, I understand it. Um, and he says, it's about challenging yourself to find your inner Zen. I imagine standing on a mountain, a frontier, a pinnacle. It's about enlightenment and being spiritual, thinking about the mind and the body and their relationship. It's like what Einstein says about the theory of relativity. relativity makes the abstract sound like science, <laughs> which I think is an incredibly um, clever interpretation of this work. And I think it's like, it's that thing about um, 
engagement and getting uh, people thinking because um, there's so much more conversations that um, come out of these works um, from being there and it allows people to it allows staff as well to talk to patients in a way that's not only about diagnosis and medication but it's about oh why are you interested in this particular thing and all of these kind of um, uh, stories and hobbies come out um, so that was the book. And then as well, at the end of the project, we um, have an exhibition. And that's why I mentioned at the start, it's currently um, on at East Gallery until Saturday. Uh, please go check it out. Um, it has service user work at the centre of the exhibition. So again, we wanted to highlight this isn't, um, this isn't just any exhibition, this is an exhibition um, that couldn't, uh, wouldn't have been possible without um, service users and their work and their input. Um, so we've got these three plinths with service user works that were made in the workshop um, on them. And I think you can see on the left, um, that's uh, um, from Dexter Dorwood's workshop. Um, and as well as the service users, obviously we had um, the six artists who recreated their work um, in different ways. Um, so we had just one um, section of jades um, and we had um, Carl's uh, recreation, but instead of um, the screen prints on plywood, we had them um, on bits of paper um, that Carl had already done in his studio. Um, we also had the workshop bench, um, which you can see towards the right, um, which I'm so happy we managed to get that in. This is a workshop bench that we spent um, all of those, uh, I can't remember when, November 2020, crowded around doing all these different workshops. Um, so it's really special to have things in the exhibition um, that are from that time um, and that give a sense of, you know, the process. It's not just um, here's a glossy finish. It's actually um, this is what took place um, to make these artworks possible, um, which is really nice. And Cara's, um, as you can see, was um, sort of changed into this really magnificent um, window vinyl. So kind of taking inspiration from the blue arch that's at um, Northside as a window vinyl, but then um, making the whole artwork like that. And it's, I should have put an image here from the front, um, from looking outside to inside because it's really spectacular actually. And a lot of you might've seen it before, um, but it's really, really nice. And I also love that it's got like the plug sockets and the security bar and things like that. <laughs> Um, so it's been so nice to celebrate it that way um, and we've had a really good reception from it um, so far. So let me go forward. I'm now going to pause. Um, I have a few questions from Donna. Um, is there, so Donna says, is there a plan to return and, and evolve the art at some point or for the residents to create their own art for other areas? We will get onto this, but something very, very amazing happened on the project inspired by Carl's, which is that a service user um, created their own wall mural five feet away from Carl's BE. Um, and that was uh, encouraged by the ward manager. He'd seen what we were doing and he got inspired by the project. There's a picture of it at the end, um, which I'll show you, but that has been the greatest piece of feedback we've ever got. And I think we're in, in a lot of our other projects, we're trying to find ways that we don't just leave and um, the project doesn't continue. We're making links. We're actually doing another project right now at Northside House. So we're, we're already extending the relationship. Um, and as um, Carl said he'll be leading a lot of workshops in health settings, including Northside House. So the relationship is is definitely continuing um, and it's a priority for us to, if not us, then we link people up with other cultural organisations. Um, so I'm without further ado, I'm going to um, pass you on to Cara, who's going to talk about her practice. Thanks, Phoebe. Uh, so I think there's a couple of images of my paintings first, just to give a brief idea of what I do and how my ideas transformed into what I ended up making for Northside House. So my paintings are generally landscapes and interiors, and I think of um, how they can be used as sites to think about 
memory, identity, who we are and where we come from. Uh, the places that I picked in the work are based on my childhood visits to my parents in countries which are Malaysia and Mauritius. And the work is really exploring my feelings of longing to revisit them through my imagination. And then I guess in a broader sense, how we can all travel to other places through our imagination, through looking at the work, things like the colour, how colour can trigger you to think of somewhere that you might have been or want to go. Um, so really wanted to reflect on all those ideas for the work that I would end up making for Northside House. And so one of the great things um, about the uh, commission was getting a chance to create a workshop and getting to work with the staff and service users to really get an understanding of what it means to live there day to day and how people are really quite, really quite fixed there. And one of the things I thought about, like my first idea was, I think of a workshop, so okay, well, I'm a painter, I'll do a painting workshop. But then I thought that the thing with painting, especially when you're working with people who actually don't paint in the same way, there's a tendency to want to directly represent what you're, the image that you're working from or looking at. And I didn't want to simply have an image and then for people to paint exactly what they were seeing. I wanted to um, untangle that and think, well, what can I do to challenge that and make people create something more abstract and really think about this idea of color and shape and how to create um, a feeling of a place with kind of very limited means. So that's where the idea for a collage workshop came about. And so what I did beforehand was pre-cut some shapes, some shapes um, of forms that I typically use in a lot of my work. Um, and this was also a way for me to see what, what motifs um, the service users and staff were also drawn to because I wanted to include that later on in the, the final work. Um, it was really great. The workshop was, was really fun. Um, it was funny because I thought, well, you know, I haven't really done a workshop before, so I was expecting to like really talk a lot and guide the process. But actually, there was this really beautiful moment where you know, so I've always just introduced what we were going to do for the afternoon, and then everyone just really got stuck in, and there was this really beautiful moment where it was just really quiet, and it felt like being in a almost being in like art school again, where everyone's working together side by side, but in their own world and. Uh, yeah, that feeling of um, contemplation and reflection and watching what people were drawn to and how they were arranging their collages, I was really, really enamored by. And that and that's what I wanted to, that feeling as well as something that I really wanted to bring into the, yeah, the final piece, that feeling, that quiet contemplation, that feeling of coming to a place, sitting down, having time to think, a quiet moment to yourself. Um, and so, when I saw the leisure room, uh, we got given um, we got given a tour of the unit, and uh, the staff told us what particular spaces they wanted the artists to respond to. And I was really drawn to this room immediately. And I like could even though I didn't know what I was going to make, I just felt like this was the room that would um, yeah that would work well. And I think when Phoebe mentioned earlier, it was the window. I paint a lot of windows in my own work. And when I saw the window with the green space outside, I thought that's perfect because that in itself already felt like a painting to me. Um, and I knew that I didn't want to just make paintings that would sit directly on the wall. Um, when I saw the like generous wall space of the room, I thought, well, actually the walls could just become the, the canvas itself. And uh, we walked in and there was all this, funky heavy furniture in there and it's funny when you think about like a commission you sort of don't think of all these little little things that um yeah that can sort of interrupt your your usual way of working but actually became like a really fun challenge to work with those things so like the furniture and also the plug sockets light switches um like the color of the floor things that you can't change but actually just create like really interesting parameters for you to work within and so 
when I started sketching, um, I would I just had these photos um, of the space and I would just draw with tracing paper over over the walls as if I was creating like a painting. And then I would send them to the hospital rooms team and there was this back and forth about what it would eventually look like. And yeah, we all came to agree that um, this mural would be the most suitable thing for the room. And um, it was a really, yeah, really challenging experience painting the, the piece, you know, I haven't really painted um, like that <laughs> before um, being in, just being in a, a secure unit, you know, really challenges you as an artist to, to come up with something that, uh, that, yeah, I think I mentioned before that really feels like, still feels like you, but it was also for other people. So it's a, interesting place to be in um, and the colors that I that I ended up choosing um, I still wanted it to be bright um, so I had these yellow colors and I didn't diverge too much from there because I didn't want it to feel um, like an assault of color I wanted it actually to be quite subdued and but still somehow joyful um, something that would maybe bring about conversation about where this place might be um, I didn't want it to be somewhere very obvious. I kind of wanted it to be like a very generic uh, landscape and something that would take people sort of beyond their physical reality. And then when I saw the window, um, I wanted to, the window sort of was in the center of the space. So I didn't want to just have this window that wasn't part of the whole, the whole uh, painting because I saw the landscape, the wall, like the continuous wall as one work. So I wanted the blue arch to be part of it. And the blue arch, it really just came quite naturally. Um, something that points to the outside world, like frames it in an interesting way that would maybe generate a discussion about what's beyond there. And I think it connects the, the two walls really, really well together. Um, and I think it ends, ends up feeling quite quite immersive, but also like a haven as well to retain that kind of sense of peace that I felt when we were in the workshop together. It's so interesting that you say that because um, I think this room um, also from, from speaking to people afterwards wasn't used at all. No. Um, it was just a room, as you say, with so much strange furniture in it. Um, and I think they use it for meetings sometimes. But going back, you see people just sitting there, you know, one person at a time or two people or three people. Um, and I really think, you know, it's a, what art also does. Um, and like you said, Cara, as well as create these conversations um, on a ward is that it, it's, it's a form of escapism. And especially, you know, what you were saying about contemplation, this is the leisure room or the quiet room. It's a place where you want to get away from the world um, and especially when the world that you're in is is probably ha has not been kind to you and the the ward that you're in now has restrictions um, and having those spaces are you know more important than ever to to people on the ward um, so I think it's really transformative in that way and you know what art can do um, and there's been some comments just saying beautiful work um, and really good to see the before, before and after such a transformation. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I'm really pleased with, um, yeah, hearing about how people have used it afterwards. It's really, yeah, it's really great to know that it's become mm. a bit more inviting and people want to go in there to relax. Yeah, I was telling Cara earlier as well that um, that one person um, that I spoke to um, had his own kind of interpretation of what it was. And he was like, well, it's obviously about climate change. It's about the leaves are falling down. There's these really warm hues. Um, it's about, you know, changing seasons or the climate changing. Um, and I just think it's really interesting, um, you know, again, what kind of interpretations, the different interpretations you get. Um, so, yeah, it's been fantastic. And it also, you know, the staff and patient hierarchy being able to talk about something else that isn't a diagnosis or medication or something that's um you know that you can actually find common ground in in different ways yeah um, yeah no I really loved hearing you talk about it it's really nice thank you um and then I would like to invite Carl back <laughs> Hi, 
here I am. Um, <laughs> um, well, uh, here, we're going to go back a few years here. This is 1983, so I'm showing some student work. Um, but I think it's important because it shows that uh, these two screen prints show um, my a very, very early interest in trying to make artworks out of things that already exist. So this sort of notion of the ready-made, um, favourite artist at the time was Robert Rauschenberg, very much doing the same thing, uh, kind of rearranging what, would, what has already been made to make representations in artworks. Um, so as Manchester Polytechnic, um, we had three choices. We could do painting, sculpture or printmaking. And I chose printmaking because it was, I was going to be able to get my hands on photomechanical processes. Um, so those early works, 1983, we come right up to, um, to the present day. Um, actually, Phoebe, am I controlling the slides or are you? I'm not sure. Ah, good. <laughs> I was moving my cursor around thinking, no, this won't work. Um, so, uh, so these are some works um, in the studio using partly uh, screen printing um, workshop off cuts, uh, but also collage and painting. Um, uh, it's a bit of a work in progress in a way, um, and you can see that it mirrors a bit like a Rauschenberg, um, it mirrors itself. And the point to make here is that, um, that there was no plan for this work in the same way that actually the screen prints from my student days, they had no plan, they were constructed um, in a very spontaneous way. And I think that's always fascinated me and I've never quite wanted to know what I'm going to be doing um, uh, in terms of works. Um, so the, the, the next works here, um, they're slightly more controlled. They're, they're, they, these are just pure screen prints. Um, perhaps to a certain degree, there is a little bit more of a, a planning involved here. Um, the processes that are used in these um, screen prints are identical to the processes used in the, the, um, in the commission for Northside House. Um, screen printing process, uh, these are onto paper, but uh, the Northside House um, project, the that was, was screen printed onto plywood, as Phoebe's already said, um, whereas the, the work that's in the, um, the um, East Gallery, NUA, um, are printed onto paper. Um, so it's using taking photographs again on the left hand side, Morris Law is taken from a, a Bert Hanstra film um, about the Evoluon in, in Eindhoven. Um, it's a film still that's turned into a, a, a sort of posterized photograph um, and screen printed along with text. And on the right hand side, um, a shell and a pipe from my collection of shells and pipes. There's the other, revealing the sadness of my my obsession with collecting things, um, photographed and screen printed. So it's very eclectic, bringing things together, bringing sources together. Um, I do also make paintings. The last couple of years, uh, or the last three years, since having a, a studio at Outpost, um, I've started working on paintings again. Um, uh, as on the left-hand side, is a, a kind of a partly collage and mostly painting on paper, and on the right-hand side, a, a painting um, on canvas, acrylic painting on canvas. And again, I think these these represent um, maybe overlooked objects. Um, there's geometry, there's graphic design. I paint like a screen printer because I use lots of stenciling. Um, so very so, sort of similar processes. But I think these are these are very, um, very personal works. Um, and when I get on to talking about the process of generating the commission, uh, that's when I think I will give you an example of how I try to blow this personal language apart uh, and just use myself as a creative tool but other people's um, input. Um, and um, in recent years, these are all from 2021, um, I've started making objects as well. I sort of call them objects because I don't know that they're sculptures necessarily. I mean, maybe that's just semantics, but um, uh, and they're all quite, I think they're all sort of trying to be quite magical. It starts off with dowsing the hazel sticks on the right hand side. Um, and then I sort of played around with this idea that the rods and cones is a reference to the retina in the eye, um, but these are hazel sticks again. Uh, and then magnetic north is this kind of curious tin with a copper base and a, and a rod that's um, uh, a bit like a, a, a Andre Cadere sort of decorated rod that might have some sort of magical purpose. It's called magnetic north, this notion that you might better place magnetic north wherever you want to if, you, if you're if you the custodian of, of this piece of work. Um, 
so um, I mean, that gives you a little insight into uh, into my practice as an artist. Um, and in all the years I've been working, I have branched off to do commissions. Uh, and I find the the challenges and the parameters and the obstacles almost of of working to commission really quite liberating because it just takes you out of your out of your comfort zone uh, in a way comfort zone perhaps so um collage is a tremendously important part of that process it always has been uh, you read about the surrealists and collage um then it's the way to not know what you're doing uh, uh, we've if, we, if we've ever worked on collage we've probably found that we when you turn the thing round back to front it, it becomes the most exciting because it's completely random and unexpected um so um what you can see here uh are the outcomes of the collage workshop that i ran um at um, i think mine was the first mine was in october um just uh, so we got back after the first lockdown and and um, got into the the workshops and started doing doing the, the workshop so i had this idea an initial idea that i had for um for the commission was to make photographs of the of the lovely clay pieces that had been made some years before that were all stacked up in the, the sort of the practical workshop area um, but i ditched that idea wanting to um to really truly engage um both service users and service providers uh, in a in a practical workshop and so um and i called the workshop surrealist collage uh and um, we found a way of being able to um to to work with found objects and found imagery um uh rather than cutting them we we use this little kind of technique of drawing through with a biro pen uh, until they fell out of the paper um and um so the results of these uh these unexpected, curious, uh, sort of uh, uh, random associations. And also all the paper that was left behind, all the negatives. Um, I, I did talk quite a bit about that because they become fascinating as well. Um, what you're not seeing here are all the lovely oranges and biscuits that, uh, I don't know, somebody provided those for the workshop. So we were in amongst lots of paper and cutting and tearing um, and biscuits and oranges. Um, so, um, and... The the B yeah sorry and I, I I should draw attention to to the to the top left uh, rectangle um, where you can see a collage that has um, B unique and this is the origins really uh, they just jumped out at me because of oh, many years ago that I read um, being a nothingness Jean Paul Sartre um, but sort of and and then always being slightly kind of fearful or hounded by this notion of what it is to exist and what it is to be and what we gather around ourselves to make us make us who we are um this jumped out of me um be unique um i quite like the cheeky little unique spelt y-o-u but the thing that really struck me was be and how open that was um how completely open it is to interpretation uh, this provocation to be whatever you want to be um and that really did lead on to the collage so um, to the commission. So you can see we've got the we've got the word B. We've used the font of hospital rooms, which is a lovely font. Um, but um, I chose this pink uh, that uh, I just think is an uplifting color, really. Um, and then uh, the word B is you can still read, but it's it's kind of decorated or scattered with these fragments um, that come from the collage that I did in my own studio. Just um, again, completely random or seemingly random. Um, I like to leave people guessing and thinking that there might be some sort of story that comes out of the connections. Um, so uh, the, the final commission uh, installed in, in the space here that you can see uh, plays on that notion of be yourself, be unique, be whatever you want to be. Um, and maybe allowing anyone that sees it in, um, it's not a it's not an encrypted piece of work, uh, but at the same time, it is open to interpretation. And I'd be the first to say I'm not sure that all artwork should always be in, open to interpretation. But this is this is very much a sort of a springboard for interpretation. Um, it's a great photograph of it as well, because I absolutely love the way the pink uh, works with the green of the table tennis. <laughs> it's just really lucky there. That's that's a zinger. Um, so it looked great when it's finished. Um, uh, and um, uh, and it has, you know, I think he, just the color. Phoebe's already kind of hinted that the that that um, that the color had its impact. Um, and I don't know if you've got slides. Yeah, you have. Yeah. And so one of the um, the service users um, uh, wanted to uh, kind of make their own 
wall mural um, using tape, using the same pink color as well. Um, so, uh, so there we have it. I believe that's in yeah, that's in Catton Ward, isn't it, Phoebe? Um, yeah. So yours, yours is just to the right of it. There, and right. if you view, if you view it from Cara's room, you can see them both together. It's yeah. quite, it's quite something. Um, well, and and yeah, sorry. It's yeah. So uh, it, it's um. I think it finishes off the work because I like the idea of the words "be" and "ambition" together. Ambition and "be," be ambition. Um, the fact that the, the the pink is the same color and therefore it seems to make a definite association. Um, but more than anything, yeah. When I first heard that uh, the, one of the the service users had had um, wanted to make a mural um, and had been allowed to as well, uh, I thought that you, you know you can't get much better than that. So it's fantastic. Um, and I think the pink has been used for their football team as well, the cat and, cat and kittens. Um, yes. So there you go. This is obviously uh, you can order football kit in whatever <laughs> colours you want. But there we've got full on pink top, uh, pink shorts and pink socks. <laughs> yeah, I, it made. Yeah, I think it made its mark on the ward. <laughs> Your artwork yeah. and it was the you did the first workshop and it was the first to go up but this particular service user he actually he was so kind of inspired and affected by the work he went to other service users and asked them what they wanted to be or what to be meant to them um, and he collected all these different words and some of it was to be well to be healthy to be outside to be this um, and he chose ambition as the word that he um, that spoke to him. So I just think the the kind of synergy between those is really beautiful. Um, and yeah, it, it you know the pink is um, it's a color, it's a trademark, it's something that's that's actually symbolized a whole culture shift on that particular ward that was really unsettled, really hectic and chaotic. Um, it had such a high staff turnover. It had lots of um, restrictive practice and incidents and all of that um, has reduced so much and people have said to me they're so proud to be on Catton Ward and I think this having the pink football kit kind of show and cat and kittens they are united I also think cats and kittens is such a lovely name <laughs> for this um, men's football team um, so it's definitely changed the culture of the ward. That's for sure. Well, I live in Old Catton, um, so uh, and we've got we've got a we've got, got a cat on a ton. There's a nice little medieval pun. <laughs> uh, but uh, but cat and kittens, that's 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 the best. Uh, that does work very well. And I can't take any credit for the colour, really. It's it's, it's a Dulox colour. Um, any, you know, anyone could go and buy that off the shelf. It's just that it's a it's such a friendly colour. Um, <laughs> Yeah. We've had some comments just saying um, branched off. Very good, Carl. I think you used the term branched off in a. Well done for spotting that. I meant that. Um, and it's interesting to hear about the technique of collage and cutting by encouraging people to draw around things. And this mm. is one of the, the um, clever ways that we get around all of the restrictions in these kind of settings. We're not allowed to bring scissors in. So we have to find really inventive ways of um, of doing workshops that don't require these kind of tools. We have to be really compliant. Um, and someone's just said it really reinforces the fact that art is necessary. Um, so if anyone's got any last comments um, or want to come in and just um, ask a question to us or just say a comment, I just want to say, um, I mean, for the last two years, it's been such a pleasure working on this project with um, artists like Carl and Cara, um, who have been so supportive and so ready to go um, through the process in a really sensitive um, and thorough way. Um, we've just had one question saying, can you say more about the relationship with the staff in the hospital? Um, so we never know what the relationship is going to be like. And we, um, it was someone called Jed um, who, who knew us from another project that we did and kind of brought us in. Um, we met another woman called Sue. We met all of the um, ward teams and they have just been instrumental on the project. I think it's, it's been such a successful project to us and that's really down to the relationship building with the staff. Um, if we had people that um, that 
you know, we've there have been projects before where staff have not been on board, um, but we've had like staff members like Sue and Jed who are really passionate about the arts. They understand um, the kind of effect it can have um, and the impact it can have on people's lives um, and their environments. And once you have people like that who are willing to go lit, like the extra mile for you, um, it's made the project. We've just been able to do so much more than we ever would be able to. Um, so you know, that is one of the most important things. Um, and the research as well has com is completely um, been down to their pro proactivity and um, our relationships with them. Um, I got we've got another question saying how has socially engaged art um, so the workshops we put on changed the way you would have interpreted the brief and will you carry this practice on when producing your next artwork um, Carl do you want to yeah, I can come in on that I think it's a really good question and I and it's um, I mean I think you know that something very interesting happens in the 1980s with artists like Martha Rossler um, and um, and the shift that there is in publicly cited artworks, and what, then what Martha Rossler does with trying to make sure that community is at the centre. But it's not community art, but community is at the centre of of the discussion and the generation of an artwork. Um, that whole new genre public art thing, which has given way uh, more recently to socially engaged practice. I think that any artwork that is made without the involvement of the community or users uh, or other stakeholders is destined to fail um, because no, it's cold. No one, no one knows where it's come from. Uh, the the you know the whole thing of um of a of a lump and piece of sculpture airlifted into a plaza somewhere and uh, and everyone just sits around sits on it eating their sandwiches. So I think yeah, the socially engaged element is really important. Um, I don't believe that the community necessarily need to make the artwork. I think that's the artist's job and they do the skillful kind of interpretation. Um, but um, uh, but I think it is crucial if you, if something is going to be in publicly located uh, or in, in a community. I mean, it's, a secure mental health unit isn't, isn't exactly public um, and probably no one wants to be there really. Um, but it's a community of people. Um, and if it has nothing to do with the community, then it ceases to function as a piece of public artwork. Very well said. Totally agree. Um, yeah, definitely. Um, Cara, has your um, practice, have you kind of um, uh, carried anything on from the kind of participatory um, work that you did at Northside? Oh, I think you're on mute, Cara. Okay. Um, yeah, I we Okay. Uh, yeah, if for sure the piece that I ended up making, I wouldn't have been able to make, not even just from the workshops, but the whole experience from the very beginning till the end, you know, um, seeing what other people have made before, working with the whole hospital rooms team, speaking with the staff and service users, all of that ends up being in the work unconsciously, whether, you know, you don't really realise it until you step back and look at the photos a few months later down the line and you see it all come together because you have that distance from having made it and having done this commission um i would say uh, initially it's given me so much more confidence in um how how much i can challenge myself and what i can do with my work and um how i can redefine what i do without disregarding my ideas completely you know it still um still feels yeah the work still very feels like something that like a painting I would make it just happens to be on a wall in a hospital as opposed to on a canvas in a gallery like it doesn't feel um it doesn't feel separate from what I already do so I think that's been really important yeah no it's so it, that's so interesting and I feel like it's um if anyone's heard of the artist placement group I think it'd be great to get more more artists in in um in having different canvases that aren't in galleries and um and things like that um is you also just meet people from all walks of life which is always very very interesting that is interesting and that and that that is a distinction there between 
um, between artworks and creativity. And, 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 you know, APG really tried to champion the whole idea of creativity being maybe in, <laughs> in town planning. Um, uh, and the, does that mean that the town is an artwork? Maybe it does. But, you know, there's that distinction of cre creativity uh, or creative approaches to problem solving um, being something that is kind of different to an artwork, which is almost like a mushroom. It's almost like the kind of the fruiting body of an idea rather than the idea itself. I got mushrooms in, sorry. <laughs> no, that's great. Yeah, no, 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 um, no it's, it's amazing. Um, well, I'm gonna pause the screen. Um, so, I just wanted to say a big thank you. Um, thank you to Carl and Cara for um, joining me um, in this event. And thank you again for Assembly um, Online, Assembly House Trust for hosting it. Um, there is just two days left to see the exhibition. So um, really do go and check it out if you haven't already. Um, we'd also love to know your thoughts. Um, and um, thank you to all the brilliant staff, um, Claire and Maisie and everyone at East Gallery. Um, the whole project has been a joy. So um, thank you, everyone. If... I've just realized that I was on mute to the public, but not to you. Um, um, it's I, I'm out of, out of um, out of practice. Um, I was just saying thank you to these three for uh, being involved tonight. It's been really great to hear more about the project and uh, more about uh, each each of your works. Um, just a comment from Tess to say you have all spoken really well. Corners of hope, which I think is very good in context of the um, in context of the work. Um, a few thank you messages coming in. Al, Mac, thank you all, and Claire, thank you. Um, I'm sure it'll be more. There's a slight time delay between Zoom and YouTube. Um, the event will be possible to watch back again. So if you'd like to hear more about it, like or hear about it, do 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 uh, watch it again. And I'll post a link in the chat now to um, the hospital. Uh, I'll post in a second to um, to the hospital rooms page. Um, but thank you, thank you. I was just making sure there's nothing else coming in. Um, good. Um, thank you once again, and um, good night. <laughs>